It's International Space Week, and while we take an excited look up at that final frontier and reflect that more and more countries are launching their own space programs and sending increasing number of satellites into orbit, we ask the question, have we already failed in our mission to boldly go where no man has gone before by doing what we've done on Earth and made a mess of it? We've been launching satellites into the atmosphere for more than 60 years, thousands of them. And while many have burned up, there is a horrifying amount of space junk growing by the day. Uh, pretty humongous now. Uh, yeah, estimates are that uh, there could be 160 million individual bits of debris up there in total, and certainly about 900,000 bits that are greater than one centimetre in their longest dimension. So that's pretty, pretty astounding and rather worrying, isn't it? We are now seeing hundreds of small companies willing to launch in space hundreds and thousands of small satellites, generating service for Internet, Internet of Things, Earth observation. Imagine that in the next five to 10 years, more than 23,000 satellites are planned to be launched in space. And this number is growing while we are talking. So as we increasingly rely on satellites for our weather forecasts, our telecommunications, our nation's defences, and finding our way from home to work in our cars, the risk to these grows exponentially, as even the smallest fragment could bring down a satellite or even the International Space Station. It is not comparable to a gunshot. We have the, the energy contained in a one centimeter particle hitting a satellite at that velocity roughly corresponds to an exploding grenade. Uh, so the consequences of such a hit mean a satellite failure uh, for larger objects, even a satellite destruction and fragment generation, which again then has environmental consequences. One Iridium satellite collided with fragments of an out-of-service Russian satellite in 2009. It was estimated that the impact speed was around 45,000 kilometers per hour. In turn, that sent thousands more pieces of debris into the key orbit area. We, we have objects out there which could, uh, statistically or in a probabilistic matter, come together and um, crash and generate more debris. And there's something which is called, I believe, the Kessler effect or the Kessler uh, syndrome, which if you have two large objects come together and collide, they will generate debris which in turn will be able to collide with other objects, which will create a chain reaction, which could actually create a complete detriment to a certain area around the Earth. The largest fear that we have is that we enter in some sort of cascading effect, where one collision triggers the next one. And this is not, not anything that will, will happen within a microsecond, like in the movie Gravity, but this is something that will set in slowly, hardly noticeable, but unstoppable. Uh, and uh, over decades, the, uh, the frequency of collisions might increase uh, without human influence. Uh, that is a scenario that might render some regions in space unusable for spaceflight, and that will be a disaster for spaceflight. The UK government, through the UK Space Agency, announced funding for seven UK-based companies to develop new sensor technology and artificial intelligence to monitor hazardous space debris and open the way to make this part of space safer and potentially clean up. The UK's got a, a proud tradition of being very active in world affairs and setting rules and ensuring that we live by a rules-based international framework. So within organisations like the UN, we think we can play our role in making sure we're all signed up to um, you know, an agreed approach on, on space. And finally, there's, there's definitely a commercial opportunity there. Um, in order to keep space clean and to some extent to clean it up, you know, there will need to be activity in space and you know, the best way to do that, we think, is by encouraging the commercial sector to play a role. The UK has already committed £10 million to the European Space Agency's ADRIOS programme to clean up space debris. And the latest funding sees companies like Lift Me Off developing and test machine learning algorithms to distinguish between satellites and space debris. While deorbit will use a space-based sensor on their recently launched satellite platform to capture images of space objects and couple this with passive by static radar techniques. 
The difference with doing it from orbit is that we are much closer, uh, potentially. Um, we can uh, repurpose the, uh, the orbit platform using its onboard propulsion system to, um, to approach objects that, uh, that might be of interest. Um, so if we can find an opportunity and uh, the, the technology to, uh, to approach those and um, to, to rendezvous with them and even to dock with them, then we can start to manage that in a much more proactive way. Um, even to the point where we can uh, potentially completely deorbit them. There are many ideas, some that may sound wacky, and they're being tried to see just how we can reduce the threat from the space debris. They were funded a couple of years ago to put up an experiment which launched from the International Space Station where they created a bit of space junk and then they experimented in different ways to try and bring it down. So they um, tried a harpoon, uh, they tried a net, uh, and I think they, you know, had an interesting time of seeing what worked best. I think the net was really quite effective. I think it really is important, though, that everybody, all the space nations, um, you know, put their minds to this now because this is a pressing problem. You know, we can we can leave that to the last minute, but at that point, it may be too late, um, or at least we'll be very far down the other side of that that hill. Um, so by being proactive today and taking advantage of, of national strategy to uh, keep, keep the uh, space environment safe and usable for everyone, um, it will position the, the space sector much more effectively uh, to address this uh, issue and to manage this issue in a sustainable and safe way in the future. The final word goes to Holger Craig, who heads the European project to deal with space debris. Use of services from space is, is in everybody's interest. Um, mitigating the problem, space debris, uh, should be in everybody's interest as well, because we have generated a global problem that can only be solved on a global scale. It needs a global response. Only time will tell whether the efforts of the European and the UK space agencies and their opposite numbers around the world will generate that global response to firstly ensure the missions that we do today are sustainable and whether the technologies and the strategies of companies like Lift Me Off, Deorbit and the others will get solutions to save our space. Mm -hmm.